Back in 1956, General Motors predicted the rise of self-driving cars in this musical short called Key to the Future. Well, the future took its time getting here, but 60 years later, self-driving cars are truly just around the corner. And while there's some backlash, in his Time cover story, Assistant Managing Editor Matt Vella predicts they will make the world safer, more livable, and more prosperous. And Matt's here with us. Matt, good morning. Good morning. Thanks let's take that. Let's look at that phrase that you, we just used to start with. Safer, more livable, and more more prosperous. How so? That's right. Um, well, the safer is the easiest answer. Uh, you know, human beings make mistakes when they're behind the wheel, unfortunately, and that's what leads to most accidents. Um, but the the other two are a little bit more esoteric. But uh, it's you know we're trying to say we're on the verge of a big technological revolution like the PC, like the internet, and it's going to disrupt a lot uh, that um, that we're used to. Whenever this topic comes up, though, the, other, the next topic immediately is safety. Yeah. What if these self-driving cars have a defect or they, they, there's an incident? Yeah. And last week, we just saw it. Uh, the Google's autonomous car yeah. crashed into a bus. Yeah. When things like that happen, is it a huge step back? Yeah, um, I and mean, this is a really interesting question. I think there are a lot of people in the car industry who are worried that some catastrophic, catastrophic event, some accident where someone, you know, God forbid, loses their life, sets the whole movement back. But the reality is human beings are, are really bad drivers. 94% of all road accidents are, are the fault of human error, distraction, mistakes, that kind of thing. Um, and computers tend not to make those kinds of mistakes. Computers don't, don't get drunk. They don't um, get tired. They don't, you know, they, they can't blink, you know. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a concern. People are watching it, but uh, it's not a setback. Uh, there's, in addition to a technological shift here, Matt, as you point out, there's, there's, a, there's a major psychological shift at work because I, I love the line in, in your piece. You say, in the throne room of the American psyche, a driver's seat occupies central stage. You know, and, and there's, but you also point out there's no right to drive enshrined in the Constitution. Yeah, that's right. How, I mean, are we ready to make this adjustment? You know, it's interesting. Some revolutions happen overnight, and um, sometimes the future creeps into the present more slowly. I think the driverless car is an example of the second. Um, uh, drivers have been losing control over their cars slowly for decades. Traction control, cruise control, stability control, all this technology has slowly been taking our, uh, our control away from us. And I think more and more, the more and more people get used to that, the more and more they're being conditioned to essentially say, I'm, I'm ready to let a computer um, take over. You have all these supporting industries, like auto insurance, like even how we design lanes. Everything seems like it will have to change. Will this all be mandatory, do you think? I think, I think it's not going to be an overnight mandatory thing. I would say uh, my personal belief is that it should be made mandatory, but I know that's kind of on the edge of things. Um, I think you will see progress move ahead slowly. Um, and eventually, I think, you know, we'll see it. Your article is fascinating. I love that you called it a precision ballet. Thank you. Looking forward to the future. Matt Vella, yeah. thank you so much.